I needed an LED backlit sign with my logo for my new studio setup. Buying a custom sign can get very expensive. Whether it's a logo or a sign you want for your home, this 3D printed DIY approach will make it very easy and affordable. I'll show you step by step everything you need to prepare your graphics for a 3D model, design the frames for the LEDs, and wiring and mounting the frame. Hey everyone, welcome to 3D Max Builds. If you've been here before, you may notice that I have a new studio set up. Today I'll show you how I designed and built this LED backlit sign behind me. I will go over everything step by step so you can design and make your own. Let's get started. Before getting started, I was curious on how much it cost to get a custom sign made. I found a few sites online and it looks like it would cost me anywhere from $459 to $1,500 to buy one. But this is a 3D printing channel, so I'm going to make my own. And now I can see how much I can save with the DIY approach. I use two programs to make the STLs. The first is a free program called Inkscape. It does everything I need for creating vector graphics and is perfect for these first steps. I want to make the sign as large as possible, so I need to resize it. I will be printing each letter separately, so the limitation will be the height of the 3 and the D. My print bed is 256 by 256 millimeters, so I will resize it to get the height as large as possible and still fit on the printer. Make sure the height and width are locked when resizing so it scales correctly. To make the 3D files, I need to export each letter as a plain SVG file. If the graphics are text, you'll first need to convert the object to a path. In my design, I'll have two layers for the 3 and the D since I want the shadow to be in the back. For the 3, I'll save the foreground as 3-A and the whole thing as 3-B. The D will be D-A and D-B. And all the other letters can be exported as just one file. For making 3D files that are simple, I like to use Tinkercad. It's another free program, and I think it's the easiest to use, especially for beginners. Here I just need to import both files for the three. Since I resized the files in Inkscape, I only need to change the thickness here. I'm going with 3 eighths of an inch. For the front, I could just double that to get 3 fourths of an inch. Then I combine the two parts. I do the same for the D. Then all the other letters I just import, set the thickness at 3 eighths of an inch, and export as an STL. Next, I import the first file into the slicer. I'm printing these on my Bamboo P1S, so I'm using Bamboo Studio to slice the files. These steps might be different for you depending on which slicer that you use. Since I sized it to 256 millimeters, you can see that it's maxed out, but I can turn this one so it's not right up to the edges. I want to print this one with two colors, so I'll need to use the color painting tool. There are multiple options here. You can see the fill tool works for the top face, but it filled the lower part when I applied it to the sides. Instead, I'll use the height range. First, I increase the height range. Then I apply it to only paint the top half. Now I need to move the prime tower away from the part. There's a couple changes I recommend to prevent an issue that I didn't realize until the end of the build. The problem was the light from the LEDs shining through the print. The first change is increasing the top and bottom shell layers. And the second is changing the infill to gyroid. Both of these changes will help block the light shining through, as you can see here. The A on the left was made with the default settings, and the A on the right was made with the changes. To get a smoother surface, I also applied ironing. Another option is to print upside down and use the texture from the plate. And here's the difference between ironing and flipping the print upside down. If you choose ironing, using the topmost surfaces will only apply to the top layer here, so I'm selecting top surfaces to make sure I get this area as well. I apply the correct materials, then slice and print. It took about 17 hours to print these parts. If I didn't apply ironing, it would have been easily under 10 hours. So print time is something to consider when using ironing on your prints. Here are all the finished parts. Next is the frames to hold the LED lights. For these, I go back into Inkscape. This time I only want the outline, so I will remove the fill. Then I'll add the stroke and change the thickness to 1.5 millimeters. I combine the two outlines, then click on Union. The frames need to be smaller than the letters, that way the LEDs are hidden behind them and not visible. To inset the lines, the shortcut is Control and left parentheses. For mine, I set the inset 13 times. Depending on your files and size, you might want a bigger or smaller inset. Now I export the selected object so I can import that into Tinkercad. This time there's a little bit more work to do. First I import the file, then I change some of the settings. I change the quality to 24, then change the height to 5 eighths of an inch. You want to make sure you have enough space for the LED lights. Since I only want the outline, I change the fill mode to the inner line. 
then changed line width to 1 16th of an inch. The original test I printed was way too flimsy, so I'm adding a thicker base for extra support. I duplicate the object and change the height to 1 16th of an inch, and change the line width to 1 half of an inch. I also need a place to insert screws, and I'll be using Velcro to attach the letters so I can remove and attach them very easily. For this, I make a 1 inch by 1 inch by 5 8 inch block. I also need to add two holes for the screw a 3 16 hole for the screw to go through, and a 3 8 inch hole to fit the screw head. I raise the 3 8 inch hole 1 16 of an inch. I align the three parts to the center, combine, and I can duplicate and modify it as needed. I place two on the frame and combine, then export as an STL, slice, and print. Some frames require some extra steps, like this D. I want some LED lights for the inside, so I add an extra piece here and another to attach it to the frame. Then I add a couple holes to allow wires to go inside the frame. I do these steps to make the frames for the rest of the letters, then slice them all and print. The frames took about five hours to print, and I used about 600 grams of filament. Now that everything is printed, I need to get some LED strip lights. I found a set for $9.99. Yeah, these aren't going to work. The lights are spaced over 3 inches apart, and the cut areas are spaced over 19 inches apart. I ended up returning those. Then I bought a set of Govi lights that worked much better. The lights are spaced about 3 fourths of an inch apart, and you can cut it about every 2 inches. So be sure that you buy a quality set of lights. I added an affiliate link for the Govi lights that I used as well as some other things I needed to buy, like the set of screws and anchors, and some Velcro. Time to put everything together. First, I attach the LED lights to the frames. I remove the backing and attach the strip to be closest to the front and away from the wall. I go around the entire outside of the frame. Then I cut it to fit. Be sure to cut only at the indicated cut areas. I'm making sure I attach the lights in the same direction every time. I have the negative pull towards the edge. If you switch the polarity, the lights will not work. On the D, I also add a strip on the inside. I do the same thing for the rest of the letters. Now I need to wire the LEDs. I'm just going to solder the wires on. Or if you prefer, there's another option to use connectors instead. I found wire on Amazon that would work, but I also found wire in my garage and I saved a few bucks. I'm using green for negative and white for positive. Be sure you do the same for all the connections, because again, if you mix the polarity, it will not work. For the D's, the B, and the A, I solder the wires to connect the two sections together. After finishing all the frames, I'm now ready to start mounting them. I start with the three. I place it where I want on the wall, make sure it's level, and mark the two holes. I also check for studs to see where I need to use anchors. I drill the holes, place the anchors, and then screw the frame in place. I apply two pieces of Velcro on the blocks. Then I attach the front in place. And now I test the lights. Yeah, I'm definitely happy with that. I put the next letter in place with the frame to make sure the spacing looks good. Then I do the same steps to mount it. Now I solder the LED strips together while making sure to block the camera like a professional. Now I do the same steps letter by letter, and I test the lights after each one. I want to know where the issue is if I run into one, like right here. I resolder the loose wire and test again, then I finish the rest. To cover the wires, I will use this gaffer's tape. I apply some over the areas where the wire is visible, then I paint over it with the same color as the wall. All right, so if I bought a sign online, it would have cost anywhere from $459 to $1,500. With the DIY approach, it only cost me $51.83, and it's about an 88 to 96% savings. The only problem with this now being so affordable is now that my kids saw my sign, they each want their names put up in their rooms. I hope you enjoyed this video, and it helps you on your next build. Let me know in the comments if you decide to make a sign of your own. To see more videos like this, please like and subscribe, and check this out next. Thank you for watching.